Let me make this 1080p. All right. Okay, we're all set. for people to join the meeting. Okay, still zero viewers. One viewer. Um, let me set up the attendance form real quick so you guys can do that. Or you, one, the one person can do that. Uh, let me see. I have sent the attendance form in the chat, so please go fill that out. Yep, so while you guys are filling that out, I'll wait a few more minutes just so everybody has time to come to the meeting, you know. Okay, and if you want to follow along, just do the what we've done in every meeting just go to anaconda open up anaconda press jupyter notebook launch that and then go to your default browser and go from there so yeah um let's make the project file for this folder on top of folder rename we'll call this meeting six there we go. No, actually. All right. 
Make sure to fill out the attendance form. I'll send it again. Um, yeah. I think we'll start at 4.50 this time. Okay, um, how many viewers do we have? Okay, well, I mean, might as well start now. All right. Um, so, welcome to this meeting. We're going to be talking about, we're going to be going further into depth with NumPy. And um, last meeting was cut a bit short because I failed to upload a file. But now we're going over what, um, yeah, we're going over what we should have went over in the last meeting. So there's that. Um, yeah, so let's start. Python 3. So, you can follow along what I'm doing right here. Okay, so let's call this attributes and methods. Okay, well, there we go. Attributes and methods, there we go. So, we're gonna be talking about useful NumPy methods and attributes, which is pretty obvious from the title. So, um, yeah, the first method we're going to be learning about is the dot max method. This allows you to find the maximum value in a NumPy array, which, um, before we go over that, let's start by making an example array. So, just for review, um, let's write this out. Okay, so just for review, what this does, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, first you need to import NumPy as MP. Okay, there's that. So now we're going to make a NumPy array called uh, ARR or R. So, numpy.random.randint0510. Okay, now print R. So here you go. So what we did is we created a NumPy array of size 10, 10 values here, and each of the values are in the range of 0 and 50, just for review of the lesson before that we covered random in. So yeah, we did that, and um, let's say you wanted to find the maximum value of this array without having to create a for loop. Just print array.max, and then here it is. So obviously, um, Max is not the only one that can do this. You can also do this with array.min. So let's use the same array. Uh, easy. All right. Um, and if you want to find the indices of this uh, value for the max or the min, you can just do print r.argmin instead of argmin or argmax instead of just max or min. So you could just say dot arg max. This is a really, this is another way of getting the maximum value. And obviously this works with min as well. So arg min. There we go, for the fourth index, index of the array, you have the minimum value. So yeah, that's pretty, Simple. Um, now we're going to be going to something that it's a topic that it's pretty important actually. You'll need to know about, the, you need to refer back to this a lot. This is array shape. So if you have been in Algebra 2 before, you've covered matrices. This in a way, the array shape, so matrices are two-dimensional arrays. You can have matrices in NumPy and then they're just, 
they're just two di- uh, two dimensional numpy arrays. So, um, how you define or how you find such sh- the shape of an array is through the shape attribute. So um, we have R. So let's print out the shape of R, which is done with this without the um, parentheses because this is an attribute. This is not a method. You're not calling anything. It's a variable, an instance variable within the array object, and then you just print that out. So as you can see here, it's just 10. There's no other value for it. Um, that means it's just one dimensional. So see here, it's just one dimension. Now, here is an interesting method. So you have array as we've printed right here. So now you could say array is equal to array dot reshape. Or we can call this a new array. We can call this reshaped array. Array dot reshape. So what you're doing here is you're changing the shape of this array. So this is a 10 by 1 array. So it has 10 columns and one no 10 rows, sorry, 10 rows and one call. Wait, no. 10 columns in one row, yeah, my bad. Yeah, so this has 10 columns in one row. So you could say, no, I want this array to have, how about two columns in five rows instead. So now if we print reshaped R, you have this. Two, two rows, five columns, okay. Now, if you get the shape of this, two, five, there we go. So two rows, five columns. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so then there's that. Yeah, so um, basically, as long as there's the same amount of values within an array of this size as there is in the original array, it's fine. But if I wanted to do it, reshaped r1 is equal to r dot reshape 35 so we have 10 values in our array you can't really put 10 values into a 15 value array right and it's going to give you an error right here value error cannot reshape array of size 10 into shape uh shape 35 that makes sense so we're going to cut that easy um and we'll go back so um yeah um you can yeah any value well let's make another array let's redefine array so we have more things that we can do with uh reshape so what's a good value for this array is equal to numpy dot random dot randint you know what no how about this one numpy dot zeros and we call and we just 20 so this is an array of length 20 and this is just one dimensional so uh, you can reshape this oops uh, whoops that's my bad uh, you can reshape this to be four four by five and you can reshape this. Now notice that we're not assigning this to any value here like we were doing with the reshape array. The, if we wanted to print the original array, it's still the same. We're not changing the value or anything. This outputs something and you need to assign it to another variable or the same one if you wanted. So if I said array.r.reshape, r is equal to r.reshape, Five four this time to switch it up. If you print R this time, it will have an impact on the value of R. So yeah, there's that. Now, um, now that we've covered basic shaping and reshaping and such of arrays, we can go over uh, how to find the types of uh, values in the arrays. So this is a pretty simple one. Um, Yes. Oh yes, you're right. Um, yeah, you can also yeah you can also use negative uh, indices and such in the reshaping. 
Wait, you mean for indexing or actual reshaping? Like, wait. I did not. So, if I wanted to do this. Huh. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, I mean, I, I'll update the lesson for that then. All right, well, so yeah, you can use negative values for reshaping NumPy arrays uh, as well. So, yes. No, negative one. Ah, uh, okay, I see. So for a number that 20 is indivisible by, it still gives an error because it can't fill that in. But if you give a value that 20 is divisible by, okay, I see. Oh, wait, my bad. There we go. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, yeah, I'll update the lesson to include that. I <laughs> That's good to know. Um, all right, so there's that as well. So um, now that that's out of the way, we will cover how to find the type of the values in an array. So this is a pretty simple one, but uh, it's an attribute called dtype. You print that, then it's a float 64. Float is the same thing as a double in Java, or no. Yeah, it, it, it serves the same purpose as a double in Java, in which it it's a value um, that you can store decimal points after. It's a value that, it's a number value that has the ability to store decimal points. We don't really need to go further into detail than that. That's just how it works. Um, so yeah, there's that as well. Yeah. Um, okay, now here's something very, here are two different methods that it's, pretty easy to confuse but the difference is very <laughs> the difference makes a for lack of term lack of better terms the difference makes a big difference you know so let's redefine array again numpy dot random dot randint let's change it up this time zero to one hundred and let's do fifty values so now we have 50 values in a one by one array. So let's say you wanted to copy an array, right? So let's call this copy array. There's two ways to copy an array. Um, so one is the method called dot copy. And uh, the other is the method called dot view. I'm going to go over why these are different and why it's important to remember this difference right now. So uh, first we're going to go copied r is equal to, unsurprisingly, copy, er, uh, sorry, r dot copy. So yeah, um, yeah, so you print r and you print copied r. There we go. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Um, yeah. So what happens here is that, let's say I changed a value in R. Or let's say I changed the value in copied R, my bad. So copied R. Let's say that at the index 27, there's 50, yeah, that works. Okay, at the index 27, I changed the value from Okay, let's make this a bit smaller of an array. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying and it's kind of hard to show the difference. Okay, there we go. So here, the array is copied well. So at index two, I changed the value from 28 to 29. So if I print R, the value is still 28 here. But if I print copied R, the value has been changed. So whatever changes you make to copied R, do not transfer over to the original array. This array is owned by itself. Whatever changes you make will affect it and only it, not the original array it was copied from. 
that is not the case for array dot view. Also, this also works vice versa. So let's say r at index four is equal to one instead of fifty. So print r. So that's changed to one, and print copied r. That still remains at fifty. So that part, yeah. So vice uh, in both directions, if you change one of the array, whether it be the original one or the copied one, it doesn't transfer over to the other one. That is not the case for view. So let's call it viewed. Let's make a new uh, array called viewed r, and let's call it r dot view, which is pretty self-explanatory. So uh, let's print r, and let's print viewed r. Yeah, so these are the same values and such. So yeah, it makes sense. Um, so now let's change the value. Let's change a value, sorry, in viewed r. So let's say at index zero, I don't want it to be 24. I want it to be 37 instead. So print r. Notice how, okay, so look over here. The change, actually, let me write this. Let me print the viewed r as well. So when a value is changed in view r, viewed r over here, the change transfers over to r. That's because viewed r is essentially calling back to this array. So it has the same effect if you do it the other way around because it call if you change a value in the original r array so in index 3 uh, instead of wanting it to be 25 i want it to be 13 so the change can also be seen this way because whenever you print a view to r you're just calling to this array and then you're printing this array Essentially, the variable viewed r is r. So any change you make to it is going to affect this, and any change you make to this is going to affect it. So, yeah. Um, copied is when you want the arrays to be completely independent of each other, and view is when you want the arrays to be dependent on each other, essentially. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. That's that's a good point actually. You can do the same, um, essentially the same thing. If you say viewed viewed r or viewed r one, shoot, what just happened there? My bad. Viewed r viewed r one is equal to r. So yeah, if you this has the same effect as making r. Uh, viewed r1 is equal to r dot view so yeah everything you just saw right here happens to when you just do a simple equal sign as well so yeah thank you for that point um yeah uh so it's less now that you've learned what it means that an array actually has its own memory address and actually owns the values as opposed to directing towards the memory address of another array. Here is an easy way to check it. So um, we have viewed R and copied R, right? So let's say we want to see if copied R um, was own, for lack of better terms, or has any, or is its own actual array. So yeah. So dot what dot base does is it's an attribute where you can find out what this um, variable is directing to, whether it has its own memory address or it's whether it's directing to another one or another array. So in this case, it says none because copied array is its own array. It's not directing to any other memory address other than itself. So that one makes sense. 
and viewdar dot base if you do this it directs to the original R and it prints the R out here so that also makes sense so yeah here's an easy way to check whether an array actually owns its values for lack of better terms yep um all right so now we can move on to indexing and selection this one is going to be a fun one and it's going to be very very useful later on um because you're going to be doing this a lot indexing and selection okay so let's make a new r numpy this is what i do each time um i just make an array filled with random values for in a certain range yeah, and uh, if you want, just a reminder that you can follow along within the code that we provided in our GitLab, which is on our website. Uh, so yeah, uh, all right. So yeah, so now let's print R. So this is R. This is R R. <laughs> okay. So an easy way to index an array or to output a specific value within the array is just to put that index, uh, put the number of that index within brackets and then I'll put it. So index four is this. We've already gone over this. I mean, we haven't gone over it officially, but we've used it before. So this is the explanation of how, the formal explanation of how to use it and when to use it and such, you know? So um, we have a 10 value array and Let's say we wanted to make it into a 2D array. So r is equal to r dot reshape um, 5, 2. There's not much you can do with a 1 by 10 array, so there's that. So print r. Yes, as you can see here, it has five rows and two columns. So now, if you wanted to access a certain value within this uh, array, be, you can't really just use one value within the brackets anymore because what could it point to? One, two, three? Would the three go here? One, two, three? You know, you can't really count that way. You have to give multiple values for each of the dimensions or the yeah, the, each of the dimensions of the array. So this is a two-dimensional array, so you have to give two values here. So index one and index two. Oh, yes, that is my bad. So this is uh, the first, the first value refers to the, what do you call it, the rows, and the second value refers to the columns. So here, so index two of the rows, that's going to be the third value because computers start counting from one and then index one of the columns. So that's going to be the second value because computers again start counting from zero. So that's 49. Yeah. Um, you can also use different brackets. So you can say, oh, my bad. I did the exact same thing. So you can do it like this as well and it has the exact same effect. Um, and this can also be done with three-dimensional arrays. Uh, we haven't really shown any three-dimensional arrays, and you probably won't be using them that early on, but you will obviously use them later. So it's good to know now. Um, this can be extended upon any dimensional arrays, actually. So let's just let's make a new array. Um, let's just do zeros. Actually, no. Um, mp dot random dot randint. What's this one gonna be? Uh, twenty. Okay, zero to fifty. Twenty-seven. That's a nice cubed value. Um. So yeah. Then print r. So you have tw all twenty-seven of these values, and then r is equal to r dot reshape three by three by three. So now if you print R, obviously you won't see it in 3D, but 
that this is a three-dimensional array. You've got multiple two-dimensional arrays all in one array. So yeah, it's a 3D array. So you can print R at 0, 1, 1. That's going to be here. Yeah. Um, and there is not much to go over really. No matter how many dimensions of array you decide to arrays you decide to do, you uh, this technique will always work as long as you have the right number of indices. And such. Oh, and you can also use negative indices as well. So um, let's say in this three D array example. So this is something you can only, uh, you can't do in a programming language like Java. So don't go out here learning this and then the next day you take a comp sci test for Java and use these and get the question wrong. This is, um, this is not applicable in Java and we're just using it in Python. Yeah, it's something, yeah, it's something that does not carry over between the two languages. So here we have the array, uh, the 3D array here, right? So let's say we wanted to get the very last value. Uh, as we covered before, you just use negative one for the last value instead of getting the length of the array, subtracting one and such. So yeah, the last value is gonna be the last one of these, and then it's gonna be the last row, the last column, and then that's gonna be three. And you can also go negative two, if you wanna go second to last here, so that's gonna be here. You can also go negative two here, negative three if you want. That's gonna be the first row. But if you go here, it's gonna be out of bounds. It, it works pretty much how you expect. So yeah. Um, now, um, now that you've learned how to output individual values of arrays, which is called indexing, let's learn how to do multiple values of arrays. Um, this is called slicing. So I guess this doesn't really fit into the attributes and methods anymore. Um, attributes, we'll call this attributes, methods, indexing, and slicing. My goodness. Okay, rename. Yeah, so it's slicing if you haven't guessed already. <laughs> uh, so we have, let's remake our array one more time. Uh, call it 50, and let's give it 50 values just for fun. So, <laughs> there we go. That's our 50 value array right there. Um, so here you can create a smaller array called sliced. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be called sliced array, but it outputs a smaller array. And you can do this just by using uh, colons. So you, let's say you wanted indices three through, I don't know, 34. And now if you print slice, uh, sliced R, oh my goodness, okay, here you go. If you print that, it starts at three, which is over here, uh, yes, and it ends at 34, which is here. So it only sliced that part out and it outputted it. Um, now, unsurprisingly, you can also do this with 2D, 3D, 4D, whatever, how many of these, how many dimensions you want, uh, you can do that there. So let's say R is equal to R dot reshape uh, 510. There we go. And then you print R. Now you have a nice five by 10 2D array. Um, and you can also slice this one as well. So you can go R is equal to, oh no, my bad. Um, so yeah, you can go slice uh, just R indices in the rows, you can get indices uh, two through three, two through four, and in the columns you can get indices four through seven. I don't know, just random numbers. And yeah, there you go. So you're only getting these 
Oh, sorry. You're only getting these two rows. These two. My bad. <laughs> you're only getting these two rows, and then four through seven. So if you count up from here, four, zero, one, two, three, four. Four is going to start here, and you only get these six values. So yeah, that's uh, slicing. And obviously you can do this with 3D, I mean, I already told you this, but just like indexing, you can do this with any dimension of arrays. And if you wanted um, to go from the beginning of a value, so if you wanted to go from, let's say, 0 to 4 and 4 to, four to the end, so what's the end, 9? Um, instead of having to look for all these values, you could just leave it blank and it goes to the end or the beginning depending on where the colon is. So yeah, this starts from the beginning and goes all the way to 4, not including that because that's how it works. So only, so it doesn't, it, it has everything except for the fourth index or the last one because it doesn't include the last one. And yeah, it does the same with the last. Uh, it does the same here with the columns. Starts from index four, and it goes from there. Yep. Uh, yep. So there's that. Mm, let me see. Oh yes, you can also slice with negative numbers. So, uh, yeah. So let's say you want to go from the beginning to negative two and from negative, negative 5 to the end. Yep, you can do that. <laughs> as simple as that. All right. Um, so there's a little, so, OK. The next thing we're going to be covering is called fancy indexing. And no, I did not make this name up myself, but, you know, it fits. <laughs> so. We have, let's have, uh, okay, we're gonna need a different array for this example to, we don't need a different array, but it's gonna show the how it works a lot better. So let's say we have numpy.zeros. So just a reminder that this uh, function, or this method, sorry, uh, creates a numpy array filled with only zeros for this specific uh, size. And it's gonna be 10 by 10. Data type not understood. Is it, does it need to be in a tuple? Oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so the parameter is just one tuple, or tuple, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how to say it, but so yeah, you need to surround the numbers with parentheses. So if you print array, you got this. So now uh, let's make a small, you don't need the parentheses, so let's make a simple for loop range 10. R i is equal to i. Print r. Okay, so quickly before we go on, let's go over what, what just happened here. So we created a 10 by 10 array filled with only zeros. That was pretty obvious. So what we did here, we're going to iterate through, we're going iter to iterate through the array 10 times. And for each of the rows, all the values are going to be uh, set to i. So this is row at index 0. This is going to be row at index 1. So all of them are set to the value of 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK, so that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, yeah. So let's go on. Um, we can, let's make a new array called fancy r. So here, you can get certain rows of, so let's say you wanted this. You get only these specific rows of the array. And it jumps between them too because it's skipping over three and five and seven, um, and it's only choosing the values that you give it. So 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that, and let's see. You can also do them out of order. So if I wanted to make fancy or just leave fancy array alone, and then just define it in here, uh, six, five, three, seven, for example. So you got the rows six, five, three, and seven. And obviously this is not only, you can't, you don't need to only do this with the rows. You can also do this with the columns as well. So if I wanted column six, four, and five, six and five. Oh, did I mess something up? Oh, no, I think I messed something up. Wait, um, I think you need to put it in a separate one. Oh, okay. So this is giving us an out of bounds exception. So yeah, there we go. Huh. Well, that didn't work as expected. Wait, Rahi, do you know how to do this? I think I messed something up real quick. Oh, well, it's okay. Um, yeah, so that's the fancy indexing. Uh, yeah, uh, so now that that's all aside, we can go over selection real quick because we only have eight minutes left, but there's not much to go over. So let's redefine r is equal to numpy dot random dot random uh, 0 to 50 25 so there's gonna be 25 values pretty standard there we go um so now uh now that we have such um such a range we can create a boolean that says Whenever print whenever array is greater than 25 So now this is interesting. So what it did was It created another array it printed another array that Has false for the values that do not meet this condition this boolean condition and true for the values that do meet it so This you can use this for filtering so let's say you had a data set and you wanted to filter out some variables because they were too low or too high, some outliers or something like that. You can easily do it like this, and um, you can define bool array. You can, I'll call this bool array, or bool r is equal to r is greater than 25, greater than or equal to, let's say. Uh, you can also obviously give it to a value, and you can use this as a filtering type thing for your uh, array. So we have our array, right? We have R. So let's say we have R, but we give this bool array as a parameter. So let's talk about what this is gonna do. So we only have the values, this only returns the values where this condition is met. So it looks at each of these indices and says, oh, this one's false. Okay, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna return that one. This one's false, we're not gonna return that one. This one is associated to a true one by its index. So we're gonna put that in the new array, which is why it's the first value there. It's the first value that has the true next to it. So yeah, there's that. And um, you can also do so I mean, you can also put this inside the array as well. All of them that are greater than three, and that's obviously gonna be, oh, all of them are greater than three. Okay, I'll just put a better example. Greater than 25. This has, there we go. This has the exact same result if you do it in here as well. Um, and yeah. Uh, that is pretty much it for this lesson. That's, we just covered attributes, methods, and indexing, as well as 
uh, sorry, attributes and methods, as well as indexing and selection. Those two lessons are available on the uh, on our GitLab page uh, under the Python Crash Course repository. So you can look at those notes as well while you're watching this. And uh, thank you for you know joining our meeting and everything. Uh, yeah, so thanks. I'll stop the stream now.